Merhabalar arkadaşlarım. Hello friends. So this is going to be another library tour. And this is going to be history, but with like a specific focus on like the Ottoman Empire, the Roman Empire, uh, a little bit of the Greeks. It's going to get bigger as time goes on. This is just a small section. And I don't have all my Roman history books in here. Uh, this is just one part of my shelf. So with that said, let's get started. So obviously, the Siege of Constantinople, this is a gem of a book. I had to get this. When I first saw it, I was like, I had to get this. And it's basically how Constantinople was sieged. It goes over the strategies, the participants, I believe what led up to the siege. Super cool book, uh, especially if you did it alongside like a book about strategy theory. Uh, yeah, super cool book, super interesting topic and super important for both Roman and Ottoman history. Um, Suleiman the Magnificent. Uh, to be honest, I like to play the game Civilization, and Suleiman is in the, in the game Civilization. And so that's why I got this. I actually want to know about the person. Of course, he's also very famous uh, and very important for the history, which is another reason. And this is an autobiography, not an autobiography. This is a biography, and I love reading biographies. So this will be a fun read. Uh, the Ottoman Empire and the world around it. I believe this is just a book of essays about um, features of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so like sovereignty and subjects, uh, the margins of the empires, clients and dependents, uh, stuff like this. Just various topics. It's not like a systematic treatise, just various topics. Um, that is a part, I, think, I believe this is part one of a series, and I think I have part two. Uh, this is volume two of, again, um, uh, like the Ottoman Empire and its transition to a republic. Uh, yeah, just a collection of essays, not like a systematic uh, treatise or anything like that. Not something like, that, say, like the the fall of Rome or the rise of Rome by uh, Gibby or Gibson. I don't forget how you say his name. Okay, Caesar, uh, Adrian Goldsworthy. I have a bunch of Adrian Goldsworthy books on Roman history. I don't know if he's like a reputable historian, but I believe he writes for the mainstream public. And he has a bunch of books on Roman history. Um, this is just a biography. I love biographies, so anytime I can find a biography about like uh, a sultan or uh, a Caesar, or even just like a prefect of the era, uh, I look for that because I, yeah, I love biographies. Again, Adrian Goldsworthy. I have a biography on Augustus. Um, Augustus is a pretty uh, important figure in Roman history. Also a very controversial one. Uh, yeah, a big book. Should be fun to read. So this I already read, The Twelve Caesars. This was so fun to read. Of course, a uh, questionable historian in terms of being factually accurate, but was nonetheless a terrific book. The writing style is amazing. Uh, it reads like like Livy, which is very exciting, and that leads me to Livy, uh, The Rise of Rome. And you could probably, to be honest, you could probably skip this book if you wanted to get into Roman history, but it's super fun. I've, I always say that it reads like a Game of Thrones book, because it's just like betrayal after betrayal after betrayal that <laughs> goes on throughout this book. Uh, it really shows the cutthroat nature of Roman politics. But again, it's how accurate this actually is, I don't know. Um, Shattering Empires, The Clash and the Collapse of the Ottoman and Russian Empires. Uh, this, I think, is super cool because I don't see a lot of written about this. Like when I go and look at bookstores and look at like Ottoman or Roman sections, I don't really see like the um, uh, international affairs components of that era, right? Like, the, like, um, how did the, the Germans relate to, when they took over the Roman Empire, how did they relate to their neighbors? Or how did the Ottomans relate to their neighbors? Or how did the Russian Empire relate to its neighbors? Uh, so I thought that was really cool and fresh. It was really um, refreshing to see that. And so I wanted to get it, especially because I do want to study the history of Russia, both modern and classic, so. From Rome to Byzantium. So I actually got this book because people, were telling me that Byzantine is like its own study. You, like it, it is part of Rome, but it's it's really its own nature, its own beast, you could say. Uh, so I got this. I got a few books on 
specifically just the history of Byzantium, which you'll see coming up here. Uh, I believe it's just a general overview. Yeah, so that would be fun to read. Uh, the introduction to Roman law. Uh, Roman law is super cool. Uh, and this book, I think, is a good introduction. Uh, there are obviously better introductions, but if you just want like a straightforward introduction, I would go with this. It's got an actual like papery cover, which I don't really like. It's very thin. But this might be because the text is really, like, I don't know, maybe it's one of these weird books that are hard to print. Um, but, yeah, this is a good introduction. I liked it. Law of Resistance in the State. So I got this book and another book, uh, Opposition to Roman Law and the Reformation of Germany. Not only because I want to study, like, various legal systems across the world. Um, I've studied Canadian law. I've studied American law. I've studied uh, UK law. I've tried to stick more with the civil systems, or sorry, the common law systems before I get into civil systems. Um, but like next I want to do like European law and German law uh, and Turkish law. I want to study these. And I thought, well, wow, uh, when I saw this book, because I actually looked up this series and I was going through this series and I saw this and I was like, yeah, this is no brainer. I had to buy this. And to supplement that, there was also this there, and I thought, okay, yeah, again, another no-brainer. Uh, I had to buy this. So I'm going to read those two books alongside uh, this book, which is not in the shelf, it's just over here. Uh, this book I'll read alongside those books um, with another book that you'll see coming up. It'll be a nice German law slash Roman history reading stack. So this book I've reviewed before. This might be the, like... I might say the best book I've read on the history of Rome, simply because it gets to like the, the essentials of what you need to understand about Roman history. Uh, yeah, it goes over the, the, the expanding borders, the collapsing borders, uh, what kind of evidence is used uh, to support claims of Roman history, it gives some overviews of the leaders, the relationships they had between the leaders, the economy, um, uh, the structure of the army, uh, politics, yeah, you name it, this one over it. Super interesting. And there, at the end, there's some uh, good arguments about how you classify the fall of the Roman Empire and what constitutes actually like the, the genuine collapse and the different theories about that. So I believe I showed you volume one of this. This is, or sorry, volume two. This is volume one. And again, it's just essays. It's just essays about general features of the Ottoman Empire. Um, let's see what the table of contents is. Let's give you an idea. And I think, oh, here we go. Agrarian policy of the Young Turks, vanguard of a nascent bourgeoisie, uh, Great Britain's relations with the Young Turks. Uh, yeah, just general, general topics of the Ottoman Empire, or the beginning of the Republic. Uh, Halil Najik. Um, I don't know if this is a one-part series. I think it's a two-part series, and I think I have the second part. Or I could be completely wrong. Um, but I got this because, again, I mean, it's obviously the author is terrific on this topic, but this is just another series of essays on the, on the Ottoman Empire. It's not like a treatise or anything systematic. And uh, I thought I'd want to, I wanted to get all of his works, but it's not all translated into English, and I'm going to be honest, my Turkish is nowhere near the level of reading an academic text. It would take way too long. It would take me like four months, probably, because uh, I read really slow in Turkish. Uh, the origins of the Ottoman state, from frontier principality to empire. Uh, part two is on the state. Uh, part three, economic and social life. Yeah, so this would be a fun book to read. Uh, so this book, I uh, don't know much about this era, um, but since I have a bunch of books in German history and Ottoman history or Turkish history, Berlin, Baghdad Express, this was actually just in the bookstore and I picked it up. I wasn't looking for this book. I said, you know what, I'll just get it. Like I, I went to the bookstore like six times and I saw this book and I was like, okay, this is the sixth time. I'm going to get this book. That's basically the only reason why I bought it. Uh, the Last Pagan, Julian the Apostate. This is probably one of my favorite Roman history figures, in part because he preached like that tolerance is like, the essential feature of uh, 
that binds women life, women's social life. Yeah, we need to be tolerant of people's beliefs. I almost view him as a centrist um, for the time, as a political centrist. And he was very into like philosophy. And there was a point where like he, he was given like everything on a platter in life. He could have been like basically I mean, all his, his housing was paid for, his food was paid for, he had servants before he became like a major political figure. And instead of using that, that wealth, he went and studied like Greek languages, uh, Latin languages, philosophy. He went and, and developed intellectually with, with the freedom that he was given, which I really, really appreciate. That was uh, very admirable of him to like continue to push himself despite the fact that he could have lived, he could have coasted for the rest of his life. So I liked, I like him a lot. He's one of my favorite Roman figures. Okay, Roman Law and Society. So this is one of those books that I was talking about, uh, about uh, Roman Law and doing like a Roman Law study alongside like a German Law study. Um, it does say Roman Law and Society, but when it says Society, I think it's referring to Family Law and how the family structure was related to the Family Law. It actually isn't much about Society from what I understand. You go to the Table of Contents. Yeah, so criminal law and social order, persons before the law, social status, legal status, legal privilege, legally marginalized groups. Yeah, uh, it's not really about society in like a sociology sense. It's more about like um, different types of uh, law and how they relate to society. So this is like going to be a really, really good book for anybody who wants to get into Roman law. Roman studies. Uh, this was a no-brainer for me. So if you know, if you've followed my channel on my Instagram, you know I love Oxford Handbooks. And this was a no-brainer, Oxford Handbook of Women's Studies, right? This goes over so much. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to read this alongside like that, that history textbook, you probably know most of like what's good about Roman history. So you got like forms of entertainment, uh, you got different approaches to studying Roman history. Uh, the tools, so obviously like different types of uh, evidence, like linguistics, archaeology, uh, stuff like that. Uh, then you have the early Rome, the different periods of Rome. Uh, you have the ideas that were prevalent in Roman in Roman uh, history, like political theory, Hellenism, religious pluralism, Judaism. Yeah, very good book, very systematic. It's a big book. I think it's like a thousand and something pages. A History of Byzantium. Now this is what I was talking about, about getting books specifically for Byzantium, or Byzantine, because it's considered its own empire, it's considered its own thing. Uh, I believe that at one point the, the rulers of Byzantium were a completely different group of people, because uh, when the Germans took over, I thought, I, I, if I'm recalling correctly, the Germans took over the, the, the main part of Rome, and Byzantium was considered its own thing. It had its own supply of troops, I believe from Anatolia, and it was boarded off with very uh, big, thick walls that were hard to penetrate, and it was economically independent from the other half of Rome. And so it developed in its own way, in its own direction, its own politics, its own people. So this will be an important book for that. This isn't Roman, but again, uh, the origins of Rome are in Italy, uh, Greece, uh, like Macedon, right? So I got to read about Greek history and, and the other city-states that were in the region. I have to expand my library on that. I do have a few other books, but again, this is only one shelf. So this is Classical Sparta, uh, which after seeing the movie 300, I always wanted to learn about Sparta uh, because I've heard some pretty crazy factoids about the way of life. Like if the baby was genetically defunct, they'd throw them off a cliff. I don't know if that's true, but it's a crazy piece of history if that is true. Um, so this will be fun to read. It's a strategy book as well. Uh, Met, Met the Conqueror in his time. I saw this in a bookstore, and I watched the series on Netflix about, about uh, him. I knew he was important. I'll probably read this book um, when I'm more into talking about like the or reading about like the Constantinople and, and its fall because I think much of his life revolves around that in, in terms of like how at least the narrative told about him is uh, and it's a biography right so of course I'd read this this is going to be great uh, Alexander the Great of course I have to read about him um, 
This book, I believe, is just like a it's a collection of different writings brought together and put into a put into a coherent narrative. And it is from another greater book, I believe, uh, the library books. I, I'm not sure actually. That'll be fun. Uh, this book is again Alexander the Great and Successors, which I think is going to be important for uh, understanding the region, understanding its history, especially how it relates to Rome, um, and just to understand why he was such a great figure. I mean, I don't know much about him, but I know he lost like less than 700 troops in his in his, in his wars, in his conquerings. So that would be uh, fun to learn about him. So those are Roman, Ottoman, Greek, uh, Macedonian type books that I have in my, my shelf. Um, and with that being said, ciao.